Well, good afternoon. I'm a uh, registered pharmacist uh, who practiced traditional pharmacy for about 15 years and then was lucky enough to uh, head up a drug information center uh, for Eckert Drug Corporation while I was still in business. And I did that for four years. And at the end, we were answering 4,000 medical questions a week. I had a staff of four other pharmacists and 26 technicians. And through that time, I got to do a lot of research, and it dawned on me, pharmaceutical drugs cause a lot of problems. <laughs> I met a uh, physician who was an ER doctor, and he said, you know, Mike, I'm seeing the same patients in the ER over and over again. He said, I'm not doing anything. I didn't get into medicine just to slow the inevitable progression down. So that's the first time I heard a physician talk like that. So we got to be pretty good friends, and we, we started a, a medical practice outside of Tampa, Florida. And we wanted to, we said, with chronic disease, we don't do very well. We do great in this country with acute stuff, with surgeries, but chronic disease, we just keep adding drugs, adding drugs, trying to ameliorate conditions. So we were all, all excited and tried different modalities, vitamin C IVs. We came across a diet program that a good friend of mine introduced me from Canada. And we were shocked at how fast our patients were responding without doing anything else, just changing their diet. This metabolic syndrome and syndrome X is arguably probably the biggest uh, healthcare problem we have in this country. It certainly uh, is the groundwork for the four or five leading causes of death. And uh, you're probably all familiar with that uh, statement that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in February, I think it was 2005, that this current generation is going to be the only one in recorded history to have a shorter lifespan than the one that's previous to that because of the manifestations that we see in Syndrome X. I want to, it's a good thing I'm from New Jersey. We learned to talk fast there, so we kind of go through this thing. I want to show you that this was our first patient. She was referred to us by another physician, 50 years old. She was a corporate executive, uh, very overweight. She was on all these drugs. These were maximum doses of the oral medication, and her primary care physician said, you know, Karen, it's time for the insulin. She came to us in tears. She didn't want to do it. These were her labs with those medications, that 720 triglycerides, total cholesterol. That cholesterol HDL ratio was the worst I've ever seen. Um, thyroid dysfunction. Uh, basically, she was a mess, and she was, she was heading for an early grave. In th less than three months, doing nothing else but changing her diet, these were her labs. Triglycerides, 104 from 720. HDL cholesterol from 19 to 56, thyroid function improved. And she was able to discontinue every one of those medications, those eight medications, with the exceptions of Synthroid, which we were able to get down to the lowest dose. She progressed on this and was, fine, and was able to come off of that too. Hippocrates said, you're all familiar with that slogan, let your food be your medicine. I had no idea how profound that statement was. Now, I want you to look at food, if, if, but when you guys leave here today, if you can just get this concept in your practice setting, any agent, I cannot think of one modality that will give you better clinical results, repeatable and predictable, time and time again. There's not one supplement, there's not one thing that can give you results against this syndrome than this simple protocol. We got to look at food, not like maybe clinicians, dietitians, food pyramid people. We're going to look at food in relation to the production of two hormones, insulin and glucagon, which in my clinical experience, dealing with tens of thousands of these patients, I believe these are the two master hormones. We can give them HRT, we can give them testosterone, we can give them growth hormone, HCG, we can do all kinds of things. If we don't address the imbalance between insulin and glucagon, we'll never get the best outcomes that we can. 
the combinations of different kinds of foods, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, dictate how much insulin and glucagon is released. We want a balance. Dr. Michael Leeds, a friend of mine who wrote the book Protein Power, his wife's an MD too, Mary, he has this great analogy. He says, insulin and glucagon are like a gas pedal and a brake pedal. You need both to drive your car. How much you use the gas pedal and how much you use the brake pedal depends on what road you're driving. You know, if you're driving down here around town, you might use the brake pedal with all the red lights. You get out on the interstate, you're going to use the gas pedal. Well, our metabolic road depends on the foods we eat and how much insulin is produced and how much glucagon is produced.